My name is Pierce. Although I was born in France, my whole family is American. I was always curious about what America could be like, so when I could save enough money, I could plan a big trip that would last a few months where I could get to know what it's like to live there. My first plans were to stay temporarily in an Airbnb while I looked for a job to go to a better place. I finished settling in pretty quickly. I relaxed in the dining room and turned on the TV for the first time, until to my surprise, someone texted me. When I checked my cell phone, I noticed that the number was American. Who could be talking to me? This was not the Airbnb owner's number, and I still don't know anyone in this country. As confused as I was by this message, when I opened it, all my doubts turned to fear. You are not alone. Get out of there. Was this a threat? Maybe the Airbnb owner gave my phone to a friend and they were playing a joke on me? I decided to ignore him and went to the kitchen to prepare the food when I received another message. Get out of the kitchen now, something bad is about to happen. Okay, this is seriously creepy. How did they know I'm in the kitchen? Does this place have cameras? Ah! Are you sure I'll be alright? Of course, just take care of your wound. Thanks, Doc. Listen, kid, I don't know why you're covering for whoever did this to you, but I seriously think you should be careful. Stay calm, Doctor. It was just an accident. The knives fell out of... Kid, I'm not judging you. There's no need to lie to me. I've been doing this for a long time. There's no way a falling knife could cause a wound like that. Look how it went through your hand. That could have only been one person who certainly used a lot of force. But just be careful, okay? Yes, Doctor. As I walked back to the Airbnb, I couldn't help but be terrified. Who was sending me those messages? Who was trying to hurt me? No one threw those knives at me. How could I have fallen so hard? Confused, I tried to reply to the number that had spoken to me earlier, but no message came through. I arrived back at the Airbnb and with my hand still sore, I threw myself onto the bed and fell asleep. Ah! Terrified, I woke up from one of the most intense nightmares of my life. Not because I dreamt that someone was chasing me, a family member had an accident, or that my teeth fell out. I dreamt that I saw through the eyes of someone who was on my roof, watching me sleep. Someone who was slowly approaching me with the intention of hurting me. I looked around, but I was alone. Something was really wrong. There was this smell. It was so intense, it almost made me vomit. Anyway, I had to thank my cell phone for waking me up. But when I saw that the number of the message was again the number that had threatened me before, I was not so happy. If you stay in bed, you will die. Get out of there now. This message didn't seem like a threat, more like a warning. I checked the previous messages and they gave me the same impression. Was whoever was sending me the messages trying to protect me? Whatever the case, he was right about the kitchen, so I wasn't going to risk it. I got out of bed and went to the bathroom, also taking the opportunity to brush my teeth. From the bathroom, I heard a strange noise coming from my room, and when I opened the door to investigate what the sound was, my toothbrush fell out of my mouth. The bed was totally destroyed. My cell phone vibrated again, so I took it out of my pocket and read its contents. Come out of the bathroom now. Totally willing to believe this message, I jumped violently out of the bathroom and fell on the floor of my room. Suddenly, the bathroom light broke and the door slammed shut. From inside, violent pounding on the door could be heard. This didn't make any kind of sense. The bathroom was empty a second before, but now there was someone inside and he was furious. I read the cell phone one more time. Another message had arrived. As if answering my question, I heard a terrifying noise behind me. I looked in the direction of the noise and there was something or someone crouched at one end of the room. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. His face was pale white and his body was also white but there was something wrong. That wasn't a human. It had no nose. Its eyes were moving frenetically from side to side. They were trembling. But worst of all was that smile that creepy grin from ear to ear. I was perplexed. Suddenly, that strange being stood up and slowly walked toward me. I ignored the cell phone's advice and ran desperately towards the exit. I reached the kitchen and jumped to the exit door. I put my key in 
but nothing happened. The door was still locked. I started to inspect it, and to my surprise, a small padlock was locking the door. Where did this come from? I tried to pick the lock, but before I knew it, I heard a sound right behind me. I turned around, and there it was. That strange and horrifying being was behind me. I was locked in. I could do nothing to defend myself. From this distance, I could see his face more than ever. It was as the message said. His eyes were not looking in my direction. They were simply moving all over the place. His mouth opened slowly, as if anticipating that he was very close to me. In his hand, I could see a small kitchen knife that he was probably going to use on me. Crying, I fell to the ground, praying that my death would be as painless as possible. But suddenly, something even stranger happened. When the being was a meter away from me, someone came out of the wall next to me, hugging and holding him. The wall was not broken. It was as if it was suddenly made of rubber band that could be stretched. The figure that was holding him was human. I didn't understand what was happening, but I knew this was my only chance to escape. I began to hit the lock violently using my cell phone, destroying it in the process. The lock, which was small and quite weak, gave way, and I took advantage of that moment to escape. All the while, the monster was still pushing hard to get to me. His smile was still intact, and even though he knew he couldn't see me, his eyes went straight in my direction, ignoring the other strange being that was grabbing him. The next day, I tried to avoid the ghost stories and told the owner that someone had invaded the Airbnb the night before. The police came in with us, and immediately, they also noticed the rotten smell that I had been feeling all this time. After finding nothing strange in the house, they noticed that the smell was coming from a hole in the wall at the entrance, where the last entity had saved me. The police asked the owner for permission, and after several hours, they pulled down the wall. Behind it was a man trapped in the concrete, with multiple stab wounds on his body. Oh god, look at him. This man's been dead for several weeks. The owner recognized the man. He was the previous inhabitant of the Airbnb. The owner thought he had simply left the room for some emergency, as he never responded to him again. None of us understood how the man had gotten there or what had happened to him, but as the police were removing us from the room, I saw the man's hand. And at that moment, I understood everything. His hand was tightly clenched around a cell phone, and even though it had been several weeks since his death, the cell phone was still on. I'm a writer by profession, and I often set out to remote locations to work in peace and serenity. I've stayed in quite spooky places all by myself and never regretted the experience until this one time. Last summer, I booked an Airbnb facing a big blue lake. The view was breathtaking, and it was the quietest place I have ever stayed. There was no other house nearby. The owner, let's call him Steve for the sake of this story, handed me the keys and left his number for further assistance. The B&B was a two-story cabin, perfect for any solo traveler. I decided to sleep in the upstairs bedroom because it had a balcony facing the water body. It was the perfect place to write stories. The bright moonlight reflected on the lake water. I was so into my work that I forgot it was past my dinner time. I may be concentrating too hard when suddenly I felt someone's breath behind my neck. I quickly turned around and realized I am in the middle of nowhere. No way there could be someone else in this house. Thinking it was a trick my mind played on me, I brushed off the incident. After dinner, I switched off the room lights and went to bed. The moonlight coming from the balcony illuminated the room enough to see in the dark. I don't recall what time it was, but I woke up drenched in sweat. The room was too hot all of a sudden. I wiped my face in a drowsy state of mind and slowly opened my eyes. With my blurry vision, I saw an old lady sitting on my bed. Her face was white as a blank sheet. She was staring at me with an expressionless face. Before I could contemplate the thought of how she got inside the house, she opened her mouth and vomited thick black liquid all over me. Ah! I jumped, screaming at the top of my lungs. But where did she go? I took a quick scan of the room. The lady was gone. It was like she never existed. 
God, what an awful dream. I should have gone slow on the wine. I drank a glass of water and calmed down my nerves. In the next few minutes, I was sure everything was nothing but a nightmare. But since that night, things began to get worse. Every night, I would wake up drenched in sweat with the same scary lady staring at me. After three nights, my health started deteriorating. I wanted to call the owner, but I was afraid that he would think I'd gone mad. I wasn't even sure if it was real or if I was hallucinating the entire thing. One afternoon, I was taking a bath. I had soap on my face and suddenly the shower turned off. As I searched for the tap to wash off my face, I grabbed something. It felt like a skinny hand. I got scared so badly that I slipped and fell into the bathtub. Luckily, I didn't break any bone. I had already paid one month's rent and hence didn't want to leave the place just because of some stupid hallucinations. But that night, my life changed forever. I was so terrified that I couldn't sleep for a long time, but eventually I dozed off. A sound of weeping woke me up. I got up on the bed expecting to see the lady like always, but this time she was standing at the doorway. She hid her face in her hands and her body trembled as she kept crying. What? What do you want? She didn't answer. Tell me what you want! I know I'm not hallucinating anymore! I know you're real! The lady removed her hands from her face, and I saw she had no eyes. Her mouth stretched into this big, hollow jaw, and a distorted groan came out from it. My heart stopped beating, but then she did something unexpected. She slowly raised her bony hands and pointed her fingers at the long corridor. She stayed in that position for a few seconds and walked towards the corridor. I felt a weird sensation inside of me, as if an invisible force pushed me to follow her. I came out and saw her going downstairs. Her silhouette floated in the air as she made her way. She stopped near the basement door and turned towards me one last time. Her mouth opened again, and the same eerie groaning came out. She pointed at the padlock put on the basement door and vanished into thin air. Any other time I would have fainted right away, but this time I got her signal. She was trying to tell me something. Is there something in that basement? If not, then why is it locked? I broke the padlock with a big metal vase. As soon as I opened the basement door, a foul stench filled the house. No doubt it hinted towards rotten flesh. I grabbed a flashlight and with trembling footsteps made my way into the basement. At first I didn't see anything, but the more I got closer, the smell hit me like a poisonous gas. Once the flashlight hit the corner of the basement, my legs froze into the ground. There was a dead body of an old woman decaying horribly. Her eyes had been eaten by maggots and her mouth was opened into a silent scream. I was going to call the owner Steve, but I made another shocking revelation. On the basement wall hung a big laminated family picture of Steve standing beside the old woman, whose ghosts I have been seeing all these days. The picture was clear. Steve had murdered his mother and hid her body in the basement to get rid of it later. So instead of calling him, I called the cops. It took almost an hour for them to reach the remote lake house, but once they did, I felt relieved. I left the Airbnb right then, and later read in the newspaper that Steve has been charged with first-degree murder of his mother. He admitted to killing her to acquire her wealth and the lake house which was in her name. Though I'm happy that I helped a trapped soul to get the justice she deserved, I still wake up at night having nightmares about that old creepy woman sitting on my bed, staring at me with her wide, hollow mouth opened into a silent scream. I'm waiting for my flight right now. I'm leaving this country and never coming back. Don't get me wrong, Vietnam is a beautiful place. I came here because I'm a huge foodie and I love trying new things. But this particular trip was a disaster for me and my husband, and it's all because of our Airbnb. We were only in Vietnam for a few days, but we wanted to make the most of it, so we decided to stay in an Airbnb instead of a hotel. I was scrolling through the Airbnb listings, looking at different houses, when I settled on something incredible. Hey Henry, come take a look at this. What is it, hon? 
I showed him the pictures of the house on Airbnb. It was an old traditional style house that was on sale. At the moment, it was only being used as an Airbnb. It's beautiful, but why is it so cheap? I don't know. Maybe because it's old? I shrugged. I didn't really care why. This looked awesome. We decided to book it. So I put in the booking and soon received a message from the owner. It seemed to be an automated confirmation message, accepting our booking. The next few days flew by in a blur. We landed in Vietnam, took a taxi to the address of our Airbnb, and arrived at the house. It was even more incredible in person. It was huge, and it had a beautiful garden. The inside of the house was even better. It was luxurious, and it smelled amazing. We were greeted by the owner who showed us around the house. The owner was an old man, his eyes slightly crisscrossed, his smile a little too wide, but he seemed harmless enough. After he had given us a tour, the owner departed, muttering something about some errands he had to do. He didn't speak English very well, so I wasn't quite sure what he had to say. As soon as he had departed, my husband turned to me. So what do you think? I think this place is amazing. I can't believe how lucky we are. I know, babe. Want to go check out the bedroom again? The bedroom was especially beautiful. It had high, vaulted ceilings and the bed was huge. We were both exhausted from our flight, so we decided to go to sleep early. Getting cozy in bed, I settled in. I heard snoring beside me, and I realized that my husband was already sound asleep. Pulling a book from the nightstand, I began to read. It must have been at least 30 minutes before the first sound, a scratching noise, like something was crawling on the roof. I ignored it, thinking it was just an animal. But the noise persisted, and I finally got out of bed to look. Opening the window, I looked out. I didn't see anything. Sighing, I went back to bed and soon fell asleep. Before I did, however, I glanced at my phone to check the time. It was only 7 p.m. I was woken up by a loud crashing noise. It sounded like something had fallen downstairs. I got out of my bed, heart racing. My husband had been jolted awake by the noise as well. Did, did, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Stay here. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm coming with you. We got out of bed, and he held up his phone for a flashlight. The windows were pitch black, and I couldn't see a single thing. The only thing I could see was his bright phone screen, but something about it seemed off. Honey, did you update your phone's time before we came here? Of course. Why? Your phone. Why does the time say 8 a.m.? He frowned and looked at his phone. As he stared at the phone, I glanced toward the window again, half expecting it to be daytime, the birds singing and the sun shining, but it remained dark outside. Huh, that's weird, babe. Maybe the time changed overnight or something. But it was only 7 p.m. when we went to bed. My voice trailed off as I realized how long we had been asleep. Suddenly, I turned toward the window, walked over to it, and tried to throw it open like I had last night. But as I did, I realized something. It had been boarded up from the outside. Turning toward my husband, I saw the look on his face and realized that he too had noticed. Let's try the door. Maybe there was maintenance while we were sleeping? He nodded in agreement, and we walked downstairs. But when we got there, we found that the door too had been boarded up. We had forgotten all about the noise, but suddenly I heard it again. A loud scratching noise, like something was crawling across the roof. But this time, it didn't come from the roof. It came directly from the bedroom that we had left. I shined my phone up the stairs, peering into the darkness, and that was when I saw it. A gigantic pair of eyes, shining yellow in the darkness, a long forked tongue that flicked out, tasting the air, and a huge coiled body, easily filling up the entire staircase, a snake blocking our only escape. We were both frozen in fear, not knowing what to do, but then the snake began to move, slowly sliding down the stairs toward us. Run! My husband shouted, and we both ran in opposite directions. I ran into the kitchen, thinking that I could find something to defend myself with. But as I looked around, I realized that the knives had all been removed. The drawers were empty. 
At that moment, however, I heard screams from the other room. It was my husband's voice, and it was coming from the direction he had run. Help! Someone help me! Not thinking, I ran toward him, my heart in my throat. But as I got closer, the scream stopped. Throwing open the door, I shone my light inside. And there, on the floor, was my husband's lifeless body. And next to him was that snake, its huge body coiled around him. I wanted to scream, to cry, to do anything. But I was frozen in place, my mind blank. It was then that the snake turned towards me, hissing and baring its fangs. My body finally sprung into action, and I turned, running up the stairs into the bedroom. I could hear the snake hissing behind me, getting closer and closer. I reached the bedroom and slammed the door shut, grabbing a nearby chair and lodging it against the door. As I did, however, I noticed the attic door located in the corner of the room. Bursting through, I saw light. It was distant, but it was light. I ran through the attic towards the light, bursting out into the roof of the building. I didn't know how I had gotten there, but I didn't care. I was glad to be alive. I got into the car we had rented and drove away toward the police station. As I drove, I looked into my rearview mirror and saw the old man standing in front of his house. His face was twisted into a smile, and he waved at me. The police told me that they had looked at the house. They said everything was normal and they refused to take any legal action. But I know I came here with my husband. I know that I was left alone. And I know what I saw.